Hello. I just want to share with you today some of the major challenges uh, one would basically face when you look at agriculture insurance. There's several aspects uh, to the insurance value chain. And what uh, I'm going to be sharing today is more related to the operational aspect of agriculture insurance. So if you basically unbundle the whole agriculture insurance value chain, you have at one end of the spectrum are the farmers who have risks and who want to be protected. And then on the other end, uh, across the value chain is the market, the insurance companies who are basically going to be underwriting this risk and then subsequently transferring the risk on to the reinsurers as well. So between the two sort of uh, extremes, what you see is there are several challenges. For instance, what you see in the countries that we work in today, particularly in several of our developing countries, client countries, be it in South Asia, be it in Southeast Asia, you have a disproportionately large number of smallholder farmers and uh, spread across, uh, you know, in s hundreds and thousands of villages. Now the question is, how do you reach these farmers and how do you basically enroll these farmers into any insurance program, leave alone agriculture insurance? When it comes to agriculture insurance, it's even more challenging because they are predominantly rural based, unlike uh, in other types of insurance where you would have a lot of uh, uh, potential insureds uh, urban based. So how are you going to reach them and how are you going to basically enroll them into the program? The second challenge that you see again from enrollment perspectives uh, is a lot of these farmers uh, do not necessarily even own the land. You know, they don't even have a title to the land. They're basically doing sharecropping. Uh, they're basically doing, uh, you know, uh, cultivation on leased lands. Uh, uh, so, so a lot of different types of uh, patterns in which uh, farmers basically engage in cultivation. So when you don't have any of the legal titles to those underlying uh, land that you're trying to ensure where you're growing uh, your crops, uh, then, the ch then the challenge is further exacerbated. So from an insurance company's perspective, one of the key things is you want to know a, what is the underlying risk, and I want to make sure that there is a documentary proof or evidence to make sure that uh, what I'm insuring is what, is what I'm going to be protecting and paying claim at the end of the day. And if I don't have any of those very clear sort of mechanism to, through which I can identify what is a piece of land that I'm trying to insure, what is a piece of crop that I'm trying to insure, it becomes a challenge. Then the issue is how do I basically collect the premiums from these farmers? Because there's predominantly smallholder farmers, there is huge variability in incomes. Uh, farmers might not necessarily have the amount of uh, money to pay upfront, but then they can basically pay subsequently around the crops harvesting time. But then how do you collect these money from these farmers? They're, you know, on average, you know, talking about the smallholder farmers, you're talking about a premium probably in the range of around $10 or less than $10, so significantly less than $10. So. So how are you going to be collecting from hundreds and thousands and millions of farmers, you know, where you're trying to collect these type of uh, small value sort of a premium payments as well? One is the cash flow issue. One is actually collection and transaction issues. Then there are challenges with respect to when you basically go in after you've done the enrollment and you need to develop a documentary proofs. So your challenge is basically how do you do the claims assessment of these farmers? You know? What you see is typically when you're talking in terms of insurance, every farmer thinks that uh, their risks and their sort of, uh, you know, outcomes in their small p plot of land is unique and they cannot necessarily be compared with what is happening with other farmers within a given village or in a given region. So everyone would prefer and would generally like to have an insurance uh, basically reflecting what is happening in their individual plot or individual piece of land. Unfortunately, you know, insurance cannot work on that particular basis because to cover hundreds and thousands and millions of smallholder farmers and trying to basically provide individual insurance is, is just too cost prohibitive, okay? in the way the systems are based today, okay? Whether you're talking about particularly yield-based insurance or any other type of insurance, to provide that individual farm-based insurance becomes a challenge, okay? So that's the reason what today you see in the market is a significantly higher aggregate. Either there is an index, and index is set at the level of the village or a cluster of villages or at a sub-district or a higher level. So there are all these challenges. So the question is, how are we able to going to be address this sort of a, you know, disconnect between what the farmer wants is in terms of wanting to make sure that when the losses and the claims are being assessed, that it reflects what is the loss or, that I have incurred on my piece of 
land, not in terms of what the loss has been incurred in a given village or in a given geographic unit. Okay, so that's again one of the biggest challenge that we see in insurance as well, because farmers are generally not very satisfied on this whole thing. There is other major challenge, even assuming that we are able to address this to some extent. The, bigger, the other big challenge is the timeliness of claims payment, okay? Because again, this varies with respect to the type of underlying insurance product that you're basically offering. If you're offering an yield-based insurance product where you're trying to actually go into the field and actually estimate how much, what is the crop yield, and then based upon it, you're trying to basically settle the claim is one form of insurance, which is yield-based insurance. And then other form of insurance is basically using some parametric uh, or uh, proxies, which is weather-based, where you're using precipitation as proxy to crop yield, or whether you're using temperature as a proxy to crop yield, and all those things, that you're using proxies to the crop yield. The challenge is how are you going to be able to ensure the timely claim settlement? Partic this is a major challenge when you're talking about yield-based insurance because what yield-based insurance as the things stand today is that there has to be some human physical intervention of somebody going into the farmer's field, trying to estimate the crop yield, and then reporting what is the actual yield, and then estimating what is the likely losses the farmer has incurred, and then be able to settle the claim. In several countries, uh, particularly in the Asian context, this mechanism is a very fraught mechanism because there are a lot of challenges and issues. People don't trust the way this whole thing has been done. And, and the question is, how about you now? You also have the issue of being able to settle these claims in a very timely manner. So that again is a major challenge. What are you going to be doing on some of these issues? The third one, what you see with respect to an insurance company is that if I as an insurance company or a reinsurance company have to price these type of risk, I want some data. Typically, when you're talking about an yield-based insurance, so where you're trying to use a historical crop yield as the basis, typically you would want nothing less than about 10 to 15 years of data. But again, there are a lot of other challenges because what you see is new varieties of seeds get introduced. There are new farming technologies that have been introduced. Sometimes the historical yields are not necessarily accounting for these type of changes that are happening in the marketplace. So you want to do a lot more things when you get the data. So that's the reason what people are looking for is even much longer time series data rather than just 10 years. So as to basically see, can I basically come out with some, decipher some sort of a trend that is happening in terms of yield uh, production, yield, yield production and all those things. So how do I get this data? Where do I get this data? And the other thing is that if you're trying to basically price the product at a lower unit level, say for example, at the level of the village and insurance at the level of village, or even an insurance at the level of the farmer, okay, then if I'm going to be pricing an insurance at the level of the farmer, I need the, that specific farm or the plot, yield of that specific farm or the plot for the last 10, 15 years. Unfortunately, we don't have this data and I don't think we'll ever get it in several of our countries as we speak today. The next uh, higher unit is at the village level. Today, for example, in India, where we are doing the area yield index insurance, where the unit area of insurance is the village, we do not have historical yield data of each and every one of those villages where we are trying to offer this product. So for the insurance companies, you're asking them to basically deliver a product at a village level, but then there is no data which they can use to basically correlate at the village level. So what they're doing is they basically, right now what they have is the data is at the sub-district level or a higher unit of the village. Now then the insurance companies will have to basically use some proxies to be able to scale down and bring it down to the village level. Obviously, these are all statistical techniques and mathematical techniques. So then there are some discrepancy in terms of yields that basically, you know, yield estimation that comes out with respect to what is estimated to what is the actual yield uh, in a given village. So there are several of these challenges. Similarly, if you're going in for weather-based index insurance, whether it is precipitation or temperature and all those things, you even require even a much larger time series of data. You require more than about 30 years of time series data. Not only that you require more than 30 years of time series data, but you also need a granularity of this particular weather data as well. When I say granularity, you need the data, if possible, with a smaller grade of maybe less than about you know five kilometers by five kilometers, or even much uh, you know higher resolution, going to the extent of even one kilometer or even less than one kilometer. Now, are these data available? Probably they are available. Are these data affordable? Probably not. So given these issues and challenges that we face within the agriculture insurance value chain, 
we strongly believe as the World Bank Group, and this is where we are at the forefront and trying to look at what sort of a technology solutions that we can bring in to address several of these challenges that we are seeing. And what we see today is technology has basically been changing so rapidly. For instance, mobile phones, which was a dream a couple of decades back, today is basically a common commodity in the hands of even small marginal farmers in several countries that we operate in. Not only that they have phones, they are also now, what you're seeing is an increasing trend of move towards smartphones. So people can actually take photographs, pictures, images, you name it basically. So technology is basically proliferated in a much bigger way. So the question is, how are we going to use technology? The second thing is also what you're seeing is that not only technology on the mobile, but what you're also seeing, there are also space-based technologies that has also basically increased significantly. Data, data has become much more cheaper these days. Data is available, data is available even at a granular level, and, and it's also become much cheaper and affordable as well. The question is, how are we going to be looked at? Say, for example, look at today what we see in several countries in terms of there are a lot of innovations that are happening, where people are using drones to basically take images of crops. And then through those images, they are trying to use machine language tools to basically convert those images to estimate the crop yield. People are using smartphones to take the photographs of uh, crops uh, over the growth cycle and then be able to convert these images into crop yield. So effectively what you're trying to do is that you're basically measuring, uh, you're monitoring the crop growth and crop development through the entirety of its production cycles. Okay. So there are new technologies that are satellites, remote sensing satellites. There have been a lot of innovations and a lot of improvements today that you see in the in the satellite technology as well. For example, we know of a uh, you know firm called as Planet, which has basically into which has basically launched several micro satellites, and you basically are able to uh, take high resolution data and basically and, and there is a market for this offering of high resolution data as well. So there are a lot of these new innovation innovative technologies that are coming into the marketplace. The question is how can we basically leverage those technologies. Global Index Insurance Facility is right now at the forefront of trying to push and leverage some of these technology solutions. So today what where we are gathered, this is for the uh, InsurTech Innovation uh, Challenge that we have basically launched and today's forum, Agriculture uh, InsurTech uh, Innovation uh, Forum, is primarily to basically address and, and discuss and see uh, what are those innovative ideas that are there. How can we harness some of those innovative ideas? How can we basically use some of those technologies to address the challenges that we are facing today in agriculture insurance? And that's where we are. We launched this InsurTech Innovation Challenge to basically seek out for the great number of innovative ideas that are basically being piloted, tested, some of which have also been where the proof of concept has already been established and people are trying to scale up those technologies as well. So we thought that it might be a good way to basically bring out all those ideas, harness those uh, innovative ideas and provide a platform for the innovators, provide the platform for the startups and entrepreneurs to be able to showcase what their innovative ideas is. And we are hoping that this particular forum that we are going assembled here, that a lot of these uh, startups, innovators who are assembled here would get an opportunity to be able to partner with several of the ongoing agriculture insurance projects, not just only in India, but also across uh, Southeast Asia, South Asia and Southeast Asia. We are hoping that, that there will be a lot of marriage that will potentially happen between the innovators and a lot of these projects that we're basically supporting on the ground as well. And we hope that for the startups and for the innovators that they find uh, this whole um, sort of a forum and this whole innovation, in short, like innovation challenge equally uh, sort of a promising and equally sort of an attractive for them. And we hope to continue this dialogue uh, with the innovators, with the startups, uh, with the entrepreneurs who come out with these great ideas so that we can continue to support you by providing the necessary platform to be able to showcase and, and so that we can mutually benefit uh, through this uh, entire process. Thank you to all of you.